Welcome back to Box to Battlefield. And we're moving along pretty rapidly now. Um, one, of the, one of the things that we did the other night is we, we put the grass on our field. Now, you guys know and I know that fields are boring. Fields have to have some kind of uh, excitement to them, otherwise you're doomed. Um, I don't mean just in model form, but hiking form and everything else. A stream, uh, snakes, frogs, bushes, trees, um, places to find bird nests and all that sort of jazz help little fields that are, let's face it guys, in, in general, just fields of grass are, are boring, whether they're in diorama form or one-to-one -one scale. Um, so we're going to alter all that today. We're going we're gonna to add off on a lot of vegetation. We've got our little uh, creek that's, that's here in front of our Jeep. We've got Peter Loffer's tiger tank still um, as a stand-in. Um, just because simply it's, it's easier to hold Peter's and it's, it's got its wheels and tracks together to give proper width and um, that sort of thing. So my King Tiger will be back at our next episode with the wheels on and the tracks on. Um, maybe I'll paint the barrel on, on screen, but nevertheless. It's, it's, it's coming to a conclusion. We've only had about 16 or 17 episodes, and, and I think that we've got tons out of our little episodes here. But <clears throat> let's make our field um, a, a little, it, it's, like a, it's like a 45 record. The, it, right now we have the B side playing, but we really want to get sort of Lennon and McCartney to get it back over to the A side. So we're going to have to fool around a little bit, make it a little more exciting, add a few more notes, um, is the best way that I can describe um, what's going on in our little field here. Um, you're not supposed to break Peter Loffer's King Tiger, but I just nudged the light off the front of it. Sorry, Pete. Um, but anyway, let, let's um, let's get down to painting some grass. So when I finished the shooting the other night, I painted some of the grass in this area, which you can plainly see that's starting to take a little bit of more color. Like I say, this field right now is sort of a, the B side of a 45, and we want to put it over the top. Now I must say that most groundwork, certainly in our neck of the woods, is usually the B side. So let's um, let's spend some time, let's spice it up a little bit, give it a little more interest. Um, one of the best ways to keep your groundwork on the B side of a 45 is to make it too large. Now, as you know from my compositions, in the settings that I've done for you guys over the couple of years. My composition is usually pretty tight. Um, not a lot of negative space around my vehicles for sure. And um, that, that is really gonna help. So if, if moving forward guys, um, if there's any takeaway um, from all our things that we've done, it's to, it's to keep, don't, don't try to recreate World War II or the Battle of the Bulge or a theater of war on a bigger base than what is necessary. I need you guys to really zero in on a subject matter. You know, you guys know that I have a cameraman and maybe a Jeep rider, period, full stop. And the the massive um, King Tiger, and that's gonna be shown easy, easily um, on this base, but I don't go beyond that. I don't try to put another half track in a couple of German figures playing checkers and, and all that sort of nonsense that goes on and now. And, and one of the guys to study for composition is either Greg Chillar's beautiful dioramas or Bill Horan, who in my opinion is probably the best in the world with composition. He, he fits so much into a very small setting, but when you look at it, that the model will have a heartbeat to it. It, it just will sing to you. And I, and I want you guys to, to think in those kind of sizes when, when creating something like this. Um, you'll find very quickly that we can get this to the A side of the 45, and it's not a marathon. It's not, a, it's not anything like that. It's just, 
as you guys know, it hasn't taken me long to get to this, um, you know, this, this diorama. This has taken a day of modeling. So I've gone from a king tiger to a nice setting all in a day. And, and you guys have to realize that, yes, maybe you and I have walked through three or four episodes of this. But in modeling time, it's a very short time. Other than drying and letting the plaster dry, this is like a day's effort. So keep that in mind, too. This is not, you know, the Ardennes or the Battle of the Bulge or El Alamein all in a 4 by 8 sheet. We're, we're never, ever, you know, the, the only only, only um, Dan Campriano can take on a theater of war and make it convincing. Beyond that, all of us guys sort of keep it pretty tight. So, so let, let's paint our grass. Let's zero in on some neat stuff that's going on. And, and what I do is I apply a wash to all the little groundwork here. And basically I use 502 oil paints. I think it's number 92, it's called Industrial Earth. And you and I are gonna spread out that amongst our groundwork too. And we also have this in the late um, period of World War II, um, probably November, December type of setting. So all these trees that I've come up with for our little vignette is, uh, are all going to be without leaves. There, there, there'll be a sprinkling of dried up leaves, uh, little brown curled up little things. But as far as putting vegetation on these, th there's no need for that. We're, we're trying to show that this is, you know, like I say, November, possibly early December. So those kinds of things send little messages to the up here. If I had those trees all decorated in green leaves and everything, this diorama would suddenly become a bit of a mystery. So we're not in Normandy, you know, we're, we're moving towards the Rhine. We're, we're getting close to the end. So, and so is our diorama. So let's fire up some green paint and the colors I use. Again, um, XF62, a little bit of XF3 and a little bit of XF4. And I'm gonna just fool around with them in the, I'll fire up the airbrush off camera. The cameraman will move in on what I'm doing and then we'll apply a little oil paints on top of that. And then we'll start at the very end possibly um, start putting in and filling in our puddles. And there's a little trick to that too. So let's get on with it. Enough chatter. Okay, so I'm using XF60 here. Uh, uh, sorry, excuse me, XF62. And I've mixed in a little bit of XF4. Remember, they, they, this is all the grass that I planted when I was with you guys last at our last episode. Now, gentlemen, you you can't um, you can't do this with a uh, with the airbrush that has, say, a wide spray to it. You're going to need a a pretty fine airbrush like this is the Revolution, but because you're going to have to sort of zero in on these little patches of weeds, so. And what I'll do, and, and off camera, I'll fill all this in with the grass. Uh, it, like I say, it's not necessary to. Now, switch your diorama around, because obviously I was spraying from this end coming forward. Now we want to go this way. Catch the other side. Now what I'm going to do, guys, is just add 
just a little bit of yellow. And maybe what I'll do is I'll actually use the uh, bright yellow, which is a flat yellow, XF3. And I'm just going to try and hit the tips. You know, I'm not going to try. Because once again, guys, this is late in the season. It's probably November, December type of setting in Europe. Um, you know, the, the days are longer as far as um, more darkness. So the grass is not going to be bright like it was, say, in June or July of the same year. So we'll just add a pinch of the yellow. And that percentages, guys, is not, um, as you guys know, I'm, I'm not big into that, when it, especially when it comes to groundwork. I mix until I have the color right, not 50-50 or 60-40 or anything like that. I just, and you guys will know the same too. You know, you guys will know when the colors, you guys walk on green grass every day. So you know. Okay, so this time I'm gonna try and hit the tops of the blades of my grass. So I'm not gonna be having the airbrush tilted downwards and striking it. I'm gonna be catching the tips. So I'm just gonna... And you can see guys how sharp this yellow is so it's important not to spike your grass here you just want to and maybe on the camera it's not going to pick up exactly what I'm doing here but I know that once you guys try it you're going to realize what I'm talking about. And this is just the grass blades. You know, they're, they're reaching for what little sun there is this time of season. So there's going to be just a hint of green. Not too much. Hint of bright yellow, rather. But as you can also see, um, it's why I never worried, and I told you guys this last visit, um... If they don't have the right color of um, grass at your local hobby shop, not to worry because I put on probably three different shades. And if this grass was only available in purple, it wouldn't really matter to me. And because I'm using earth tones and I'm using, um, for instance, the olive drab 62, um, if there's any overspray that gets in amongst my groundwork, it's just, it's just another volume. It's just another bit of texture on my groundwork. It's, it's not a snag. Right, now you can see how the grass is... much more interesting than it was, say, five minutes ago. So let me uh, unhook the airbrush. Okay, so after our grass is prepared, now we're gonna start in with our oil paints. We're gonna give our little groundwork a bit of a wash. And they, um, the paint I like to use is the 90502, uh, and the name of it is Industrial Earth. 
And the thinners I like to use is either the odorless thinner from AK or MIG. MIG has a same, very similar one. I use Humbrol. But it doesn't matter which one. Either one of them is, is excellent. Now you're going to want to use a round tooth, uh, paintbrush. And what we're going to do, guys, is just create a little bit of depth on our base here. And unfortunately, on our camera, it may not necessarily show too well, but, but we're going to give it a try. So what we're going to do is we're going to stay inside these shadowed areas. We're going to add a little color uh, along this little crevice here. We'll add a little bit of shadow. And all this shadow is going to come from these paints here. And all you have to almost do is just touch it. And it's just going to fly. The, uh, the groundwork is going to be porous because it's plaster mixed with very loosely held down sand so the ability of this to run is and hide is all over the place but it in the end it adds a great color like for instance this little stone here that was insignificant three episodes ago now we're gonna put a Now that stone is just popping off the diorama. And you know, we, we painted this with Tamiya Buff, number 57. And everyone probably looked at it and said, you know, this is not a fall color. This is not earth tones from the fall of the year. You know, it's, it's uh, almost El Alamein type of colors. But this little wash here, is, and you can just plant it anywhere you want. You can just put this wash down all in the shadow areas, all in the... But look look what it's doing to our little groundwork here. It's creating all kinds of little textures and little... Bringing out all our little pebbles that we've added. And now, our little buff, to me, a color is now suddenly the the foundation of all of these stones that are now sparkling in our little diorama because they're remain I'm purposely avoiding them and adding this contrast around them and then of course down by our little puddles here we'll get a little more darkness in it's a damp of course it's our little stream Let's get the little stream cooking with gas here. Even though there hasn't been a rush of water through here in a couple days. Now on the highlighted areas, so in other words, where to put this wash and where not to put it. Where you, and this is a dry brush, this is just going to be our pointer. Along our crest here, don't put any oil paint along there. That's all going to be in sunlight, this little crest here. So don't, don't destroy that. And then by adding a little contrast underneath, or a little bit of dark color, like so, it then makes this shine a little more brighter. So when, every, when all the little things are all together like our damaged king tiger and our jeep and our soldier sitting there suddenly all of this stuff is going to start to mold into one harmonizing little vignette and this is how we get to the side a of the 45 this is where lennon and mccartney start adding their notes And suddenly the B side almost plays like the A side. And this is how you accomplish that. By adding in all these little... Now, one of the also... Certainly not in this time of year, but certainly if you were to do something earlier, you could um, 
say a Normandy type of land uh, settings, you could be adding birds or you could be adding a, uh, a butterfly or something like that. Just one. Just don't go crazy. Don't be adding all kinds of birds and butterflies and making this, you know, a zoo or anything like that. Just if you had a fence post sitting here and you had a, a raven on it or a squirrel underneath, um, you know, gathering nuts, no problem. But you can only put one little creature in. I remember years ago doing an El Alamein setting and had a little lizard sitting on a stone similar to this stone sitting here and had a bright green lizard sitting on it. And that was the thing that everybody talked about when looking at the vignette was the little green lizard. So those kind of things are great to add. Just once again, be careful of your four seasons. You're not going to have butterflies and lizards floating around in the December months of the year. But anyway, these little washes are very important to add. It'll take you off the B side of the album. To the good side. And what it does is it, um, like I say, it, it creates that contrast. And that's the reason you sprayed it all, to me, a buff. And made it almost look like Al Alamein three days ago. Now it's, you know, Germany. Now, let's get into these little pieces of vegetation here and little trees. These little trees, which I'm gonna airbrush momentarily, I've just painted these black. But all these are is roots from different plants that you can find in your garden. You can't use sticks and go out into the um, field and just find sticks that have fallen off. You've gotta dig down and pull up a root ball of a different plant, a cedar tree, or the best time to gather these is in the spring of the year when you'll see them People are into the gardening on May 24th kind of weekend and they're pulling up old bushes and, you know, they're pulling up their cedar plants and making a new fence or whatever. What happens is they pull up all the roots and then myself and others, model railroaders, they probably invented these little trees or discovered what they were. But these are pretty good looking 35th scale trees. And once again, these, these guys are the roots of all those trees, the cedars and the little bushes, rose bushes and what have you. So I've just gathered a few. I've painted them black. I'm gonna paint them sort of a light, light gray in a moment. And then, um, and then just um, sort of see where they fit on our diorama. I'm gonna put Peter Loffer's King Tiger back on here and then um, start planting some trees. So let me um, fire up our airbrush. I'll get the proper color in the gun, Let's spray a little bit of these, and then um, probably plant one in around here. It's not gonna, it's not um, science to figure out where they should go, but just be cautious. And then don't forget we have a knocked out king tiger that was in flames. So if you're gonna put one of these bushes leaning against that tree, make sure that you also show that the tree might have gotten a little heated up as well. You might want to airbrush a little bit of ash or that sort of thing amongst the tree. So just be cautious to, and you know, depending on your setting and your subject matter and your vignette, um, where you go with these trees as well. You can't have a, a lively looking tree leaning over a burnt out tiger because obviously wood is going to catch fire as well. So keep in mind those kind of little details. But anyway, I'm just going to paint one for the for the filming and then um, plant it. And then you guys, I'll leave that, um, you know, positioning of all these trees for you guys to figure out. But anyway, let's um, let's go off camera for a minute, fire up our airbrush with the proper colors and then take it from there. Thank you so much. OK, so I've got our King Tiger back on here just briefly just to make sure that the grass is uh, in the right positions and the right colors and all that sort of thing. 
Um, and, and you can see just because of this little one inch and 35th scale sort of uh, contour that we made in our diorama, the King Tiger suddenly even looks larger next to our, next to our Jeep. You know, if they were on the same level, um, it wouldn't be as massive looking. So it is kind of neat, you know. And and it's um it's something for you guys to all think about too. We've always talked about how massive the King Tiger was. Let's just really put it in stone by lowering down our Jeep a little bit, and um, then it makes it even look larger. So a little fun with that on our diorama. But one of the things once again is is doing our trees. So I, I've loaded up the I water with XF19. Um, that'll be our, our color for our trees. It does sound strange because it's gray and everybody has the thought that trees are all, um, brown in color, but all you have to do is venture out and take a peek. I mean, you, you're going to see how it all's going to work together shortly. One of the other things too, is that we're going to harmonize this in the end. I'm probably going to take out to me a buff and 99% thinner. And spray right over the lee, the, the the branches of this tree and the groundwork. And I've drilled a little hole here for our little tree to sit. Um, it's been painted jet black off camera. Just to create a little bit of shadow. And now we'll give it a little hit of gray. And there we are. And on, on one of these other tree brand, tree assemblies, I'll, um, I'll go outside and find some. It is January now here in Toronto, so one of the things sitting around, there isn't a lot of snow, fortunately, in Toronto at the moment, so there'll, there'll be the possibility I could find some old leaves piled together somewhere outside, and it, if so, um, now I'm talking one-to-one -one scale leaves. I will then crunch those all up into miniature, miniature 35th scale leaves and then just with white glue put three or four amongst these branches. But that's all I've done is just painted that the right color and then a little bit of white glue. Okay, so the glue I use, as as you guys know, I, I like Weld Bond. It, um, it's a little stronger than white glue. It dries very clear, and it's um, super strong. So, now one of the things over the years that'll happen is is our trees are going to break, and you know just transportation and all that sort of stuff, and, and accidental. So I've pre-drilled a hole for this. I just drop it in there. And presto, we have a, our first tree on our little vignette. And then just around the bottom, we can put a little bit of sand or because there's still a little bit of white glue hanging around. So I just take a little pinch of sand, drop it in there. This will cover up the white glue that is around. And then Moving forward, guys, I just airbrush that the next time I have buff. I don't go out of my way to put buff or anything in my airbrush now. But the next time I fire up a little bit of buff or, you know, one of those earth tones, I'll drop that back in again and, and just give it a little zap with my airbrush. So I don't necessarily have to do it immediately. But there's, there's the start of a little bit of vegetation happening to our vignette. And now let's talk about these little puddles. Now how I fill those with a little bit of water is the simplest thing going on. I use Tamiya 
number X22 as our water. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, and you have to stir it up a little bit. It, it's probably been sitting idle in this little jar for a week or so. So what I'll do is make sure that our little base in there is totally clear of sand and all that sort of stuff because one of the th things you can't have happen is little sand grains inside our puddles. So off camera I'll blow it perfectly clean with my airbrush with no paint in it of course. Give it a blast of 25 psi. Blow any dust or any of these little hairs from our grass or anything. Blow them off and then then we'll pour in a little scoop of water. And and one of the things, guys, that when pouring this water and using Tamiya acrylic as our water base, is that then you have to walk away from your model. Simply because if you do any more fooling around on your diorama, this is going to remain wet because you're going to pour it in at about a millimeter or 32nd of an inch deep. So it's not going to dry immediately, and when it's not dry, and of course, anything that lands on it is going to stick there and be there forever. So make sure that the, it's the last thing you do on your diorama in that particular setting. Um, because otherwise, something is going to land in it and then spoil the, the whole effect. So let me um, blow this clean off camera. And then we'll come back in a second and pour the water. And then you'll see the puddle. Alrighty, thank you. Okay. One of the things about pouring the water is you cannot pour it from this Tamiya jar onto our puddle. All it's going to do is run down the side and then drip into this groundwork here. You're going to miss your target. So one of the things you're going to have to do is um, use a cup similar to this with a little spout on it. And this little spout is going to help us target our little puddle. Now as far as the color of the murky water there's a couple of colors I use black first and then buff over top of that which this is but 49 is also a great um, murky water kind of color for puddles um, and a combination I mean you guys are gonna be able to adjust according to your groundwork so at, at um, there's no water in LL Main to speak of but there's probably a little ditch here and there you may find that coloring that water is a little different than say what we're doing here in Germany so in any event take your little cup you've got your spout there for targeting And look at the high gloss that this Tamiya Clear gives us. And the other beautiful thing is, if it gets around the outside of our little thing and absorbs into our groundwork a little bit, it just makes it look like moist earth, which is also a nice effect. So basically that's it. And it happens in seconds. And you don't have to worry about a thing um, as far as uh, mixing 50-50 with epoxy or 60-40 or all those chemical things. Now, the only way to use this clear, though, is if you have a very, very small puddle. As you can see, we, we can sit here and do this puddle over here now. And it's all because we have a, a nice little, um, you know, easy targets, obviously, but this spout is tiny, and it really helps with landing that, to me, a clear in the right spot. And, it, and it's going to now take an hour to dry, so I'm not going to jiggle around with the diorama. I'm not going to shake anything loose on it. And here's the other thing, too. If, for instance... 
we'd laid those plastic pieces of evergreen like we did a couple episodes ago down un unevenly you would find that all the clear would roll to one end or the other north or south and you'd have sort of a puddle at one end and nothing other than paint at the other if that happens don't panic just let it thoroughly dry and then just re-pour but put a dime or something underneath your diorama at one end or the other just place a little bit of a shim like this thick or whatever underneath your diorama so that the water will pour back into that un uneven piece of evergreen and of course it it's hard to balance your evergreen like we did when we were creating these little puddles you don't know exactly if they're parallel with the ground <laughs> yeah, they might be 89 or 88 degrees so you have to be uh, well aware of that that accidents like that happen and they're hard to know at the time but like I say the the solve problem is or to solve that problem is just to put a couple of shims in and then re-pour you know on a day from now re-pour the x22 back in again and it'll flow to the other end of our little puddle so those are the little troubleshooting little things that you can use to um, to solve little mistakes that can happen. Like for instance, one one of the things I did is I tapped this little puddle here with my brush, and I've obviously changed or altered the color a little bit. That's no problem. I'm just gonna probably respray and then pour it back in again. So I'm not gonna dig it out. I'm just gonna spray over top of it and create a new puddle over top of the old one so easy things to solve like that so anyway that's um that's our groundwork portion of our episodes <clears throat> pardon me now we'll get back to our king tiger put the wheels on paint the barrel and then call it a day on our uh, king tiger diorama and like i say i'm going to paint the figure off camera and then um moving forward down the road somewhere you guys will see it with the figure on it and of course the Willie's Jeep and all that sort of stuff but we'll just hold off on painting the figure on camera so alrighty thank you so much for watching and we'll talk shortly thank you so much